Let us all embrace the power of we. Uh, now let me go we on Film Threat Reviews. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I was wearing a kid. Today we review WeWork, or the making and breaking of a $47 billion unicorn. Yeah. Uh, it's directed by Jed Rothstein, stars Adam Newman, or the feature, the subject is Adam Newman. Uh, and it's about WeWork, which is uh, funny because, you know, back before the pandemic, uh, we had access to WeWork through uh, through American Express. And so we use the place. But what's, what, what's weird about this documentary is I didn't realize that <laughs> essentially WeWork was a cult. <laughs> in a way. Um, what, what did you think of WeWork? Well, first of all, I'm fascinated that it was something that American Express offered because that was that's not even talked about in the documentary. So like if that was just a ploy to get more people renting office space or using office space. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's how it was like Regis. Uh, I mean, I've certainly done my share of, uh, of shared office, shared lo office locations. I mean, that's essentially how I saw this place. It was yeah. uh, a better looking version of Regis. Well, um, I really wanted to see this documentary. I, I've heard about WeWork, uh, you know, in that before the pandemic, I think like 80, 88, 89. And, but then the last year during the pandemic, it, it was like every day on Business Insider, there was some article about WeWork and how it was just toppling. And this obviously was probably during that six week period where just things were crashing. And that's when I really got fascinated because I didn't know much about it until I started really reading these daily things and the founder and all that stuff. So when I heard there was a documentary, I wanted to know, I, I was so into watching it because I kind of really wanted to know what I, you know, the rest of the stuff that I didn't know. So the documentary, I really enjoyed it. It, it really gives this broad overview of how the company was founded and all the ways that it expanded and grew and the charisma of, of the leader and, and how people sort of fell under his spell and uh, the this this wife that he had. So yeah, it, it, was, yeah. it was very fascinating to me. Um, I mean, I, I can get it a little more into my thoughts a little bit deeper, but yeah. I, I did like it. I've, I've heard this story before many, many times. Uh, I grew up uh, basically in high school, became an uh, evangelical born again uh, during the, the heart of the evangelical movement. And, and what came out of that, especially in the late 80s, early 90s, was a proliferation of what, what I would call cult leaders, uh, faith healers, basically charlatans and shams using Christianity as a way to build people out of, out of their money. And uh, it was one story after the other. And so I got very, very familiar with these tactics, with, um, with just the stories of how these charismatic leaders uh, can basically entrance an entire, uh, entire group of people into believing their their BS, so to speak, and uh, and I was definitely getting that sense with WeWork, and the same thing happening is just completely devoid of religion, which kind of begged the question for me was 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 Adam Newman, was he just uh was he a charlatan or was he just a guy who got caught up in his own uh, bullshit for for a lack <laughs> yeah. of a better term? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think it's the latter because there's this scene it kind of opens with the docu with the documentary of him preparing to say a speech and he keeps he keeps screwing it up and he can't get through the sentence of 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 this speech that he wants to give and and so at one point he lifts his leg up and, and farts and makes a joke about that and and it was just such a frat boy thing to do that i just sort of felt like ah, yeah he's He's one of those. He's yeah. one of those like believing his own hype. There's a quote in the documentary, tell a 30 year old he's Jesus Christ and he'll believe you. And this is I think, exactly what happened. The the As much as I was fascinated in, in watching this because I wanted to know the whole story and that just off the bat for me, the documentary is, I have to say, is a recommend. It It's yeah. fascinating. I love these types of stories where something is hyped and, and moves up there and then like, Schadenfreude and boom, like the, the fall comes. But what what I felt, and you know, maybe there'll be other documentaries on WeWork. I felt what was missing was more of like a like 
I didn't get a, a, a sense that this guy was a guru. Like just with the footage that we saw, all the things that he did, it's not like he was spouting something uh, so amazing that would make you go like, wow, I, I'm on board. It didn't help me understand what he did that made all these people want to yeah. join him. You know, even like um, all the people that, that, that they've interviewed that worked there who you know, obviously now don't, we don't even know exactly, they, we don't even know how they were fooled or what they saw in that. So yeah. you that, know, to, that's kind of missing for me. Yeah, to, to me though, I, I think what his appeal was, was he spoke the language and the rhetoric of the millennial generation. Uh, I mean, you know, everything I was hearing him say, you know, you you read and you see on on social media, and he's he he found a way to take all these uh, disparate mes messages and bring them into one cohesive idea, and I and I think that was the appeal because he, you know, he was really tapping into something that that. Uh, the millennial generation was really desperately looking into, and you know, the you know, I, I go back to the charlatans of of uh, religion. It's the same thing. Uh, the The difference is is that uh, you know there was true evil going on in the sense of you know they were bilking old people out of their money, their retirement, their assets. You know, this guy he he managed to capture and and take money from corporation from a high powered uh, IPO stockbrokers and investors i mean that's the that's a truly amazing uh thing that this guy was able to do and the and the heights he was able to take it with with basically uh, a shared office location business plan yes but we didn't have interviews with the investors that he built which yeah. i would have loved to have seen because they're not millennials so what was it just that they were so desperately looking for like the next big Facebook that they wanted to believe him because you know with these millennials I mean I'm watching this whole we work the shared communal stuff and I'm like and everything revolves around drinking and partying like there's a brewery inside the facilities they have a mandatory work camp to go to which is just a giant drunk <laughs> fest it's and a I'm fire like, festival <laughs> yes and they even say there's a quote that they say it's the fire festival gone right with these summer camps for someone like me who's not a millennial I, I would just take one look at that and go <laughs> No, absolutely not. And we see this camp footage. There's a ton of it, drinking, partying, but we actually never hear anyone who is saying anything specific about those parties. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I got so drunk and I missed these business calls or I, or I, you know, became an alcoholic and my family just threw me into rehab. Like I wanted things to be humanized a little bit more so I could understand what the whole ruse was around this. You, if you're making a documentary to expose people, you're never going to get the, uh, the exposed, the exposure, the, the charlatan. And you're not necessarily going to get the people who were taken in by, by his words. Um, you do get plenty of, uh, you got the number two person. You also got uh, a lot of employees who, who lost their jobs overnight or who, who just saw th this entire empire crumble uh, before their eyes and, and at a very high rate. That was interesting to me was uh, the, the guy who joins We Live because they, mm -hmm. they, they grow from We Work to We Live, which is essentially like a like a fraternity they all live in tiny rooms but everything is shared shared communal space and so now like your co-workers are your buddies and this yeah. is weird there's well, I, I can tell you many cult stories just like that too well th yes there's literally no boundaries here but and and he said that his friends who weren't a part of we work came to visit him at his home the communal home mm -hmm. and they never they never visited him there again. And in fact, those friendships kind of died. And so, yeah. like, but I, I would like to know why, what is it? Did they see red flags? Did, were they like, dude, what, what is this? Yeah. Um, I think things are missing here. Not for a lack of them trying, like you said, they're not gonna, you're not gonna get all of this. That's why as an overall documentary, it's still great because it hits all the right beats. I'd seen it happen uh, dozens of times uh, with, with dozens of different circumstances and different people and different personalities. It's, it's so easy. And, and uh, again, I, I think the, what, what amazes me is how vast, how, how it was able to infiltrate the stock market and how um, 
you know, like we're seeing it now with these meme stocks with uh, GameStop and AMC. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. how the power of of words of you know a charismatic speaker of news of a uh, of groupthink can can affect um, something as as strange as a you know the a stock price. Back to some of the preposterous stuff, like his wife. Rebecca, I think it's awesome that they show like her film footage of her being an actress and with Rosario Dawson in the footage. Uh, from We Work to We Live, there was We Grow, which was going to be, it's like her mm. early childhood education school. And she was starting it. Oh, and by the way, there's a lot of airtime for the fact that his wife is Gwyneth Paltrow's cousin, which I'm sure Gwyneth Paltrow wants nothing to do with. Being the founder of Goop wants nothing to do with. <laughs> <laughs> Goop, we work, we live, we grow. You know, the, the thought that this woman is starting a school because none of the private schools in New York are good enough for children's education just feels, <laughs> feels I mean, so worse than elitist. I mean, this is you placing yourself yeah. in some really high echelon uh, and and just the hubris, I guess, is what I'm trying yeah. to say. You know, and I mean, this this is, you know, this is how cults are formed. At these, uh, at this summer camp where he, uh, our leader, our great leader is giving this speech, he talks about something about how, like, if he really put his mind to it, he could solve world hunger or, like, or uh, help the world's orphans and, like, eliminate some world problem within two years. Mm -hmm if he wanted to, if he put his focus on it. <laughs> but but no, of course he's not. No, but you're, you're just reinforcing my whole cult theory. <laughs> Let's just go back to drinking and boozing yeah. and, and, and getting rental spaces uh, uh, subdivided and rented. Like, you know, it's it would be like me, you and I, Alan, saying here to people who are watching us, like, yeah, if we if we put our minds together, we we could solve world hunger in two years. But you know, we're just going to review movies. So like, let's just <laughs> do that instead, okay? Yeah. It's funny. It's it's just I think indicative of just how desperate we are to yeah. want to l latch on to something or or specifically someone who can who can save the world for us. Ah. And uh, and that's you know it's this story that just replays itself over and over again. Um, you know, I, I one thing I have to say is the WeWork camp sounds a whole lot more fun than church camp was. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that um, what I found fascinating about this documentary specifically is the fact that they don't have any interviews or any contact with Adam Newman himself, but you get such a good presentation of him. Uh, he's he's on he's all over this documentary. I would say he takes up maybe eighty percent of the entire documentary, which is to me just incredible that that much footage was available of him and enough to really get to kind of know the guy. Which is why I, I think I agree that he he's not doing it to rip people off. He just bought into his bullshit. It's probably wise that he didn't participate. I mean, him yeah. and his wife are like the most hated, richest people right now because yeah. they in their ouster from WeWork, they got more money than you and I will ever see. So, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's the other crazy thing is, yeah, they made a lot of money getting fired. No values. No one has a moral compass. No one, no one has a, no one can stand firm in, in their own power or knowledge or confidence and just be like, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. Adam came in. He filled the void with these people. I think this is uh, the millennial generation's Pied Piper. There's going to be, this is, he's not the first. He's not going to be the last. You know, it, it just repeats itself and it, it shows up in the weirdest places. I, I always thought it would stay within the realm of religion, but uh, it, it's gotten into corporate business. You know, the, the yeah. stock market, the investment banking world. That's how yeah. far this went. Clearly, you were fascinated by Adam oh, Newman's yeah. story and we work. You, you know, you were riveted and, and held on to every single word of this documentary. So I'm guessing uh, I'm going to say eight, maybe. Eight yeah, I, I gave it an eight. I mean, I, I really did. Like, I could not wait to see it. It was like, stop mm. everything. I'm, I am watching this. It's a tale we all love ambitious people have an idea they go for it you have to admire that they were able to do this with with whatever they had whatever tools they had F 
followed by the grand fall because they believe their own hype. It's just, it's a classic story and this one is real. So it was great. Um, and I, I think you gave it an eight as well because I, I think we both liked it a lot. We just, we 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 latched on to different things. It, uh, it spoke to us in different ways for you. It just reminded you of the evangelical past that you went through and what you've seen. So you you related to it on 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 this this charlatan level that you've seen happen over and over again. So I think you gave it an eight. I did, and I think you know I mentioned I've I've heard I've seen I've witnessed this story played out over and over again. But uh, I was fascinated by just how much footage they had of of Newman, you know, and and I felt like it, as much as he was putting on a show, he wasn't either. That that we you do get a sense of the real guy, and uh, which I mean to me, that's that's what I love about these kind of documentaries is understanding people, understanding what makes them tick, and and I think mm -hmm. this one really gives you a good idea of what made this guy tick and how he was able to uh, do. Uh, Wall Street, basically. Well, the real guy, the real guy, is the guy who has his co-founder on stage with him, but doesn't let him speak and takes all the glory. The real guy who is the one who has the gigantic office and is, you know, firing people to cut costs who are already in teeny tiny offices <laughs> while yeah. is uninhabited and huge. The the real guy is is the frat boy who's lifting his leg up to fart and laughing about yeah. that. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I would I would say that you mentioned that uh, to for me, none of this surprised me. You know, it was like, you know, everything that he did, everything that happened to him and his people. Uh, again, I've seen it all before, and it's and the cycle repeats itself. I, I can't wait for the next charlatan to come along <laughs> <laughs> and dupe the masses. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, and uh, I should mention, we work or the making and breaking of the forty-seven billion dollar unicorn is on Hulu. Yes. Uh, watch it. it it's, you're going to, yeah, you're going to find it crazy. And Hollywood has already optioned this story to do a, a fictional version, fictional yeah. biopic. And, and I think the star of the movies was actually in the documentary. So <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would not surprise me at all if, if he played Adam Newman. You got to watch it, find out who I'm talking about. All right. All right. So with that, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Let us what you let us know what you thought of WeWork the documentary. And with that, let's get out of here.